Many coffee experts have crowned the Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee as the best coffee on the planet. I'm gonna put that to the test by tasting it and seeing if it does live up to all the hype. But before I get started, I'm Joe with Joe Picks Joe, and if you're new here, I talk all about brewing and tasting of coffee. If that's something that interests you, uh, click below, hit subscribe, and if you like this and if you find this valuable, uh, this video valuable, hit the like button as well. I'd really appreciate it. And before we get into this video, this video is sponsored by, yeah, no, what am I talking about? This video has, this channel has 15 subscribers. Who's gonna sponsor us? So, so far on this relatively new channel, I've tried some really dark coffee. I've had two videos talking about really watered down coffee. I've had another two videos talking about a four decade old uh, ground and instant coffee. But today I'm gonna to mix things up a little bit. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a treat from, from this uh, sort of subpar coffee. Not so much the dark coffee, but the watered down, the old coffee. But I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a treat here. And I'm gonna try the best, what's crowned as the best coffee in the world. I'm gonna break it down into three parts. First of all, I'm gonna talk about what makes this so unique or so rare. Uh, what, how the beans are sort of processed and, and a little bit of background around Jamaica and its bean uh, processing. Uh, next, I'm gonna actually brew uh, the coffee. I'm gonna grind it up and brew it because this is whole bean. And then I'm gonna taste it and give you my full opinion on it. And at this point, some of you might be thinking, okay, I've heard about Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee, but I've also heard like some other coffee um, origins are, are better. And yes, there are other contenders for the best coffee on the planet. Those include the Hawaiian Kona bean and the Yerga Chef uh, beans from Ethiopia. Now, I haven't tried either of them yet, uh, so I can't compare this to those other two. I tried a lot of different coffee, like I said, you know, some recently on camera, some really bad coffee. Uh, but my usual go-to coffee are Kenyan beans from a local roaster, which are extremely high quality. Uh, so I am used to um, some high quality beans. So I'm gonna be comparing those to all the coffee that I tried. But let's get into these beans specifically. So these beans are grown on the Eastern part of the island Jamaica on, as the name implies, the Blue Mountains. Somewhere in the range of two to 5,000 feet in altitude. And it comes from one of five certified estates. Now this high altitude and the steep grade of the mountains makes it so there's not a lot of, first of all, not a lot of space to actually uh, harvest or pr to produce the beans. Uh, but it also makes it very labor intensive to harvest them as well. They have to be handpicked. You can't use equipment uh, because of the steepness, because of how difficult the terrain is. It has to be handpicked. Uh, and I could just imagine that difficult terrain and being able to and having to harvest uh, coffee beans as well. So hats off to those uh, those manual laborers out there in Jamaica uh, harvesting these great beans for us. The labor intensive process doesn't stop there. Uh, they're also like 100% wet processed, they're sun dried, so there's a very specific moisture content in the bean. Uh, they're hand sorted, then left to rest for eight weeks in a controlled storage. Now Jamaica itself isn't a big pr uh, coffee producing uh, nation and only 15%, so it's already small, and 15% of that is authentic JBM or uh, Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee. And of that 15%, 80% of that is exported to Japan. So I don't know why Japan gets such a, gets first dibs and such a monopoly um, on these quality beans, but good for them, whatever agreement they set up. But all of this combines to make uh, JBM one of the rarest coffees in the world. Just to give you an example in terms of cost, so per ounce, uh, usually uh, the standard coffee, you can find it anywhere between like 50, uh, 50 cents to a dollar per ounce. Uh, this coffee, this is actually one of the less expensive uh, JBM coffees out there. And this cost me about 238, 240 uh, up per ounce. Uh, so it isn't cheap at all. So you're looking at, you know, uh, over double, if not maybe four times the amount uh, in terms of price than your standard cup of coffee. Now, in terms of taste, before I start opening this up and grinding it, uh, they're generally well known for their extremely smooth tasting flavor uh, with a complete lack of uh, bitterness and full body. It's also known for having flavor notes of nuts, and I really like that. I like that chocolatey type of, type of taste to it. Uh, so I'm hoping I get a little bit of flavor notes of that. Um, but uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. So this top piece here, uh, it's just stapled on, on this bag. Um, and I should let you know this one specifically is from Green Coffee Traders. This specific um, 
for these specific beans, I'm gonna link down below to a direct link on Amazon. And I do get a little bit of a kickback, it doesn't cost you anything extra. And I get like a couple of bucks in return if you were to purchase something. So it does help support the show. So if you do use that link, I greatly appreciate it. But this was just kind of cheaply stapled on here. Um, I do like the, the, the fact that it's in this, I guess, burlap type, burlap type of bag. Um, but yeah, like when I first, I actually had to staple it back on because when I first took it out of the Amazon box, this was kind of like half off. That's not that big of a deal. Uh, in it, you find, um, obviously the beans themselves and you find a little card. Just put that off to the side for now. Uh, the bag itself, uh, is also quite premium. I, I, I kind of like it. It's kind of like this unique, um, I, I know the bag's not that big of a deal, but it's got this kind of unique, uh, feel to it. Um, though I do have to say if packaging is a big deal to you, uh, the bag itself sort of has this like uh, dark fanciness to it. And this doesn't really go with it in terms of tone. Uh, they don't really match. Let me know if uh, like I'm, I'm no designer or anything like that. But like these don't really match in, in terms of tone. So it's just a minor, minor thing. It, if it doesn't affect the, the taste of the beans, I don't really care. But if, I know some people do care. Uh, with the actual packaging and here's the packet just a little bit uh, more up close here uh, It does it is nice that it has this sort of like fancy uh, Strip so you don't have to use the scissors or anything like that with some cheaper brands uh, They do have a seal on there as well, which is really nice Unfortunately, my seal doesn't actually seal So I mean it's a nice thought, but I mean unfortunately the seal on my bag doesn't work Mm, just smelling them. Oh, it's delicious. That smells great. All right, it's, it's time to uh, grind some up. Um, yeah, so you might notice this isn't really an official bean grinder. And ew, it's kind of awkward that I run a coffee channel, but I don't have an official coffee grinder. Um, so uh, if you want to support the channel, use the link down below to, to purchase these beans or something off of Amazon so I can afford a proper coffee grinder. I'll eventually get one. I just haven't got one yet. This one is actually for spices and I think, I forget where I picked it up, so at some local store or something. Anyways, I'm going to grind them up. One thing I do want to point out here, after I ground grounded them up uh, to like this medium fine ground, I could see that there's like some something something from left over from the beans. I don't know if that's like some sort of pulp or something. Uh, if you know what it is, please let me know. Uh, I've grounded, you know, <laughs> dozens of different kind of beans in, in this grinder. I've never seen uh, this sort of leftover pulp. So if you know what it is, if it is just part of the the processing of the beans, uh, certainly let me know by uh, commenting down below. All right, to brew this, I'm going to be using an AeroPress. I've done a couple of videos on AeroPress, including like an unboxing video and, and first time use. I'll link them down below. Uh, but I really like the AeroPress, so I am going to use it. I'm going to take off the little filter cap, put in a filter, screw it onto the bottom of the main body, put this on my cup, put in a scoop of the coffee. Tap it uh, so it all uh, levels out. And I'm gonna put in some hot water. One thing I love about the AeroPress is that it's so easy to clean up. Like I just take off this filter cap and just push it out and rinse this, and it's done. Like it's so much easier. Uh, compared to like a French press, uh, it's just a fraction of the time to actually clean it. All right, now that's all brewed, time to give it a shot. Possibly the best coffee on the planet. Yeah, that's good. That's damn good. Yeah, it's just, it's really, really full bodied and so smooth. I don't taste like, an, like a, a hint of bitterness. It is just so smooth. I did an article recently on like how to 
start drinking black coffee. And my number one hint was using quality beans. Like if someone was saying like, how do I drink black coffee? Use these, use um, JBM beans. Like that is so good. Like it doesn't really need anything in it even because it's just, it's so smooth and like low acid, no bitter, no bitterness. And it's just getting better with each sip. Like it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's really quality coffee. You could just taste, you know when you taste something and you just like, or you see something, we see a piece of art or, or whatever, and you're just like, yeah, that's quality. Without anyone even telling me, you taste it and you're like, yeah, there's just something about it that just tastes quality. That is what I'm experiencing right now with this coffee. If you're on the fence about like, is it worth the money or not? I say absolutely, like at least just for the experience. Uh, the one con about that though, is that you might get uh, the palate or uh, get used to drinking premium coffee. Then all of a sudden, you know, your your monthly coffee budget uh, goes up three or four fold. So that's one concern about drinking this coffee. But in my opinion, it's a, it's a great downside to have. It's better to, what do they say? It's better to have loved and to have lost than to have never loved at all. I think that kind of applies here. So one person in the Facebook group, I was asking about this coffee, asking like some tips and everything, like asking people's opinion on the coffee. And one person in the Facebook group that I think is a coffee lovers Facebook group, uh, recommended drinking it with uh, sweetened condensed milk. I, I'm sure that's good. And I, I mean, I even picked some up, but I just, and maybe I'll eventually try it. And if I do, then I'll comment down below and let you know how it was. But I don't think this needs anything else. It, it doesn't need milk. It's already smooth. If you if you put in some milk, uh, it's going to add to that smoothness even more. Um, I would think it would be delicious, but I just right now for this cup, I don't really want to um, add anything to it. I will say, however, it will go with a Boston cream donut. And thankfully, I have one just in preparation for this video. Boston Cream, this is from my, my local coffee shop, Tim Hortons, coffee and donut shop. Um, but if coffee, if uh, Boston Cream, if you're not familiar with it, it's a, oh, it's a donut with some hair on it. Ugh. Anyway, <clears throat> it's a it's a donut uh, with like a chocolate uh, frosting, like a custard middle. Um, so just give you an idea. There we are. So I don't know what they call it anywhere else, but the custard and the chocolate uh, compliments extremely well. So, uh, full disclosure, I've tried this earlier yesterday, um, and I thought like it's gonna go delicious with the Boston cream. The creaminess of the actual uh, custard and the chocolate just absolutely pairs beautifully with the smoothness and those uh, nutty um, undertones of the actual coffee. So. <clears throat> Mm, yeah, that pair that pairs beautifully. So there we have it. That's my review of the Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee, specifically a brand from Coffee Green Traders. Again, if you're interested in picking this up, I'm linked to it down below. If you've tried this coffee before, comment down below. Uh, let me know what your thoughts on it, or were you on the fence of purchasing it or not? Either way, let me know. I reply to every comment, and I'll see you in the next one.